Hey guys, what's up? So today I am gonna be attempting something a little different than my last video. I'm still covering a murder case on a serial killer that was known in Mexico. But I wanted to attempt to do my makeup. So my friend Shelby said that she wanted me to do my makeup while I told the story like Bailey Zarian does. So I did not invent this in any way. There's a bunch of different people on YouTube who do their makeup while telling murder cases. So it's not my idea. All credit goes to everybody else but me. So yeah, I'm going to attempt to do that today. Um, I have my script here. And yeah, so I came in to tell you the story while I do my makeup. I think um, doing my makeup will be a little less nervous, <laughs> so hopefully that, that'll help me. Okay, so let's get started. Today I'm gonna talk about, I think her name is Juana Barraza. I think I'm saying that right, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. But Juana Barraza, she was a Mexican serial killer who was active during 1998 to 2006. So for about eight years or so, she was pretty active. Um, and it was estimated that her death toll was anywhere from like 42 to 48. And all of her victims were um, really elderly women. So like in their 60s and then her last kill was um, an 85 year old woman. Obviously before she started killing, when she was younger, she was born on December 27th in 1957. She um, actually had a really tough time when she was growing up. Her mom was a really abusive alcoholic and she did not have the best life at all. She did have four younger siblings, one of which ended up dying because they had a really bad mugging incident. And I look crazy right now, I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, <laughs> and there was a really bad mugging and the um, one of her siblings ended up dying. When she was 13 years old, her mother gave her away to a man who ended up sexually abusing her really, really badly. And then the same man actually ended up getting the mother pregnant, her mom pregnant, and ended up having her son, which would be her brother. Prior to her conviction and her arrest, I couldn't find anything about her life as like a young adult or like after all the abuse from the man who her mom sold her to but she was actually a professional wrestler so in mexico there is what you call um lucha libre and it is a really 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 popular professional um wrestling in mexico it's the, i'll insert some pictures here but they're the ones that wear like the really crazy colorful costumes and they do like the wrestling and you know all that good stuff so she was actually a professional wrestler which is really really interesting especially for a woman and at this time as well so she was really well known and her stage name was lady of silence and i couldn't figure out why this was her stage name you know how like everyone always like for instance, when I was younger, we used to watch like WWE all the time. <laughs> so there was always like The Undertaker because like, you know, that was like his his persona and like his, um, what's the word? Like what he portrayed, like he always came up from under the mat and like, you know, so like things like that. But I couldn't figure out why she was called Lady of Silence, but it was really, really interesting just because like her being a murderer, you know, that's became the lady of silence since Juana was a professional wrestler she was really stocky she was really fit so in order for her to take over her victims obviously she had to be you know really stocky and fit duh. and her victims were very elderly women so they were really easy to overpower for her and she was a really really strong woman so even if you came across anyone that was you know pretty strong old lady um yeah she's gonna take him down I mean she professionally wrestled as her day job I guess you'd say she's pretty average height she's all about five seven and usually when you are older like the women that she attacked and murdered she like was just taller than them stronger than them you know just bigger than them I had to finish my eyes off of camera because this was taking a very long time so I finished them off camera, so disregard that, sorry. Um, if you're wanting to know what I'm using, I can try and list everything that I'm using in the very bottom bar, um, just to help you guys out. So 
back to our regular scheduled programming. It's believed that Wana was proposing as a welfare program government official. So basically going to older um, women's homes and trying to get them to sign up for welfare programs. And obviously like older people have like their welfare checks and stuff like that. So this was her motive to know like how much they could be getting and what she could steal from them when she would enter her victims homes she usually would befriend them get them really comfortable around her and then she would strangle them with anything that she could find which would be like phone cords um like cable cords anything of the sorts and she would strangle all of them to death that's what she did for all of her victims and then she would end up stealing a sort of um, trophy from them whenever she did kill anyone and usually they were of uh, religious sorts like the religious emblem that is really popular in Mexico um, I can insert it here I don't know what it's called off the top of my head but I'm sure I'll find it in the media she was known as Mativitas Mativitas I think I'm saying that wrong I don't know anyway and it's in Spanish and that translates to like old lady killer during all of her crimes and her crime sprees and stuff um the police were really confused on um who was committing these crimes because it was said that there was a like it was like a transvestite that was killing all of these older women people were confused because there are eyewitness reports of a man wearing a red blouse that was seen leaving a victim's home and they believed that it was a man that they were looking for so the officers actually got a lot of backlash because they went through the transvestite um, prostitutes. They all ran in one certain region of Mexico and they raided everyone in that section. In that section. And they did it unethically and with um, no like warning or anything. And when they did raid them, they weren't even, they were in total denial that a serial killer was even on like in their area like they refused to believe that there was anyone that was going around killing these grandmothers and moms and you know um, nobody wanted to believe it so the police were in complete denial there was finally a break in the case on january 25th in 2006 a person who they believed to be a man was seen fleeing the scene of the last known victim of Juana. She was the last reported murder and it was of 82 year old, she has a very long name, one second. It's Ana Maria de los Reyes Alfaro. And she was an 82 year old woman who was the last known murder victim of Juana. To the police's surprise, the suspect was apprehended and it ended up being Juana, of course. And they were really shocked because obviously she was this professional wrestler that they knew of and they knew who she was and she was the one that was causing all this mayhem on all of these old women that they had no idea that she was capable of doing. So Juana Barraza was tried in spring of 2008 so she was in jail for two years up until her trial and when she was at her hearing she did only admit to one murder and that was the one that she was seen fleeing from from when she murdered Anna. Even though she only con um, confessed to the one murder she was still connected to 40 plus other ones because her fingerprints were found at every single scene and there's just no denying the evidence that was against her so she was convicted she was found guilty of 16 murders and aggravated assaults and then also 11 separate counts of murder so before i tell you i want you to take a very wild guess and guess how many years that she got sentenced in prison i just i'll wait i want i want to know what you think it was 759 so she was sentenced to 759 years in prison and was sentenced to serve them consecutively, meaning obviously she's going to die in prison. She stays in prison. She gets no parole. And yeah, at this time, it was actually found to be the largest sentence for a murder in Mexico City ever. She still is alive and she is still in prison to this day. Obviously in Juana's case, her abuse as such a young girl 
and as all of her victims were all older women it was said that she was finding so much resentment for her mom that she really was trying to take that anger out in some way shape or form so i feel like she maybe got into wrestling because it's such a um i guess intense environment and it's something that is really easy for someone to get their aggression out and i feel like i can't talk and do this at the same time <laughs> maybe the aggression when it came to wrestling maybe that just wasn't enough for her anymore so she escalated into murdering um, and finding actual victims. Obviously in all of her murderous sprees, she was finding solace and getting back at her mom, um, which is not the way to do it, by the way. With her really tragic upbringing and her really crappy mom and really bad home environment, losing her um, also a sibling as well, and being so sexually abused, it was like all the makings for a killer to be born. So I really wanted to know what you guys think about when people say that either murderers are born or they are made. So I really want to know what you guys think because in this instance, I mean, what if she didn't have a really bad upbringing? What if she wasn't so tormented in the really early stages of life where you're supposed to be and like mentally developing and you know things like that what if it was a normal upbringing and like an everyday household do you think she would have did what she did or do you think that she always had it in her um i mean i don't think she ever had any trauma which is a big factor that plays in serial killers you'll find it in a lot of cases with um like the really big time serial killers as well that they usually have like a some type of brain injury and then it totally changes the personality and then boom they're a serial killer so i really want to know what you guys think about that that was the end of this case i really hope that you guys liked it i hope sorry i hope that you like my makeup i will list everything that i use in the bottom bar so don't forget to like and subscribe and i love you so much so i will see you guys next time bye